Thanks to the supporters of channel member Lynx. Well, as expected, looks like we're going to be losing Ulrich and Guayme in the January transfer window. And it's also exposing one of the most frustrating things about Football Manager that needs fixing. Hello and welcome to part 46 of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two matches for you against Clement and Rennes. Since you were last with me, things have got pretty miserable. They were bad before. Oh, they, they I mean, we got absolutely smashed by Lons. Struggled past Green Nam on penalties. Got absolutely battered by relegation rivals Lille. And at that point, we got the dreaded Chapman unwilling to try new tactics or whatever the inbox message is. So we've had, oh, in fact, it must have been earlier we got that because you can see I've actually changed the tactic there. We've gone to a 4 2 3 1 Gagan press because that's not the thing I'm exposing about Football Manager. I do know it's a strong tactic though. And as you can see, it is helping a bit. Uh, we actually were in danger of losing the dressing room at one point. Club atmosphere had made it all the way down to very poor. We had to have team meeting about the club atmosphere. There's your confirmation. We had the team meeting about the club atmosphere being poor. Um, but we arranged a friendly, as you can see, which has helped. We did a team meeting. Uh, we've gone into training. I'm doing. I'm pulling out every trick. We've got team bonding. Uh, we've got some community outreach. Uh, we, we've been praising conduct and we've managed to get back up to average club atmosphere. So we're sorting that side of things out. Uh, we do need a win today. Cl the Clermont are bottom of the league. If we lose this one, we are as good as gone, even though we're going to have money to spend with the impending departure of Ulrich and Guayma. The only problem is it might not be as much money as I thought we were getting because I thought I'd negotiated a fantastic deal for him. An offer came in from Arsenal. Um, I think they offered something like three and a half million up front, three million on instalments. Um, he wanted to go. So I spoke to him, said, I don't want you to go. He said, I want to play in the Champions League. I said, probably not, but we've got good young players. Obviously, he didn't care. So he did the bit where we agree a price. The price we agreed was eight and a half million pounds, even though his transfer value is now showing us that it wasn't before. That's because of what happened next. But we agreed a price of eight and a half million. So I went back to Arsenal and said, can we have eight and a half million pounds up front, please? But also 25% profit from next sale. And can we loan him back until the end of next season for nothing? They agreed to all of it. And I'm I'm sat there thinking, we've got 60% retained transfer revenue. 60% of eight and a half million is getting on for five million pounds. Plus we've got another year and a half of having the player at the club and he's costing us nothing. And if he ends up being as good as I think he might be, and they end up selling him for 100 million down the line, we've got another big payday coming. I was over the moon. And then Manchester United came along and ruined absolutely everything by offering 3.6 million pounds up front, 3.9 million pounds on instalments, 2.8 million on after 10 league appearances, which is, I mean, that's the kind of cop out you lot do in your transfers. A loan back only until the end of the season, not until the end of next season. Um, profit from next sales 30%, so that's a little bit higher. And they're going to arrange a friendly. And the board accepted it over the top of my head and won't let me decline it. So we've now got a situation where if he chooses to go to Manchester United, rather than having £5 million to spend and getting to keep him for a year and a half, we're actually only going to have about one and a half to two million pounds to spend. A little bit more will trickle through over the next year or two. But come the end of the season, he's gone. And we're very, very unlikely to get him back. And kind of over thought of we don't really want him back because there's another 2.8 million due once he's played 10 games for them. So we kind of want him to be there playing those 10 games. So it is a deal that if, if he ends up a world-class player, this deal will make us more. A little bit more, like a million and a half more. And then maybe a little bit more when he gets sold on. But I'd much rather have five million pounds now and keep him for a year and a half. And this is the thing that annoys me about the game because I should be able to say to the board what I've just said to you. I would like the eight and a half million now. I would like to keep him. Like, I mean, why can't I just say, look, I mean, I'd be happier with this deal if we could just change that to end of next season. If the board have decided it's in their financial interests to have more money spread over a longer term, who am I to argue? I would like the player for another year. And there's no way for me to have that conversation with the board. 
There is no, because I'd already accepted the Arsenal offer, I didn't even get the option to talk to the board and ask them to renegotiate this or threaten to resign over it. It was just auto accepted and I had no way of controlling it. The only way I guess I could get around it, I could, but I don't want to risk it. I could, ref I could now cancel the Arsenal deal and try and talk to the board about the remaining Man United one maybe, but that feels like a big risk. So now I'm just kind of sat in a coin flip of hoping that he chooses to go to Arsenal. I tried clicking the little button there because um, he had one. He hasn't got one now because um, I was hoping I'd be able to persuade him to choose Arsenal rather than Man United. But all it was was asking him to hurry up with his, with his decision. So, yeah, we are now... I mean, I guess the other thing we could maybe do is just offer him out to everybody like this. I mean, I hadn't actually thought of doing this. I'm glad we had this chat. So if I lock in loan back length and percentage of next sale, but try and get a little bit more up front, we might be able to attract some more offers. But he'll probably still choose Man United. And I mean, it's still nice, but I think we'd have a much better chance of staying up this year and next year if I had £5 million to spend this January and the knowledge that we keep on Guayma next season as well. It all becomes so much harder otherwise. This is the new tactic. So we have finally um, started retraining him as well. He is training to play as a, an, advanced, uh, an advanced playmaker in the attacking midfield position. Um, we're playing him there already. And uh, yeah, he, he looks good there. Maybe it'll add some more to his value. And we've also signed this guy, Theo Fonseca. Um, yes, he's Portuguese. Don't worry. He was born in France and he's got French as a second nationality. Um, but he was playing um, in the Portuguese lower leagues um, where he was scoring a few goals here and there. Um, he was out of contract at the end of the season. We did the whole pre-contract thing with him and it only cost us 45000 to bring him in now. So I thought we might as well bring him in now. Now we've not got Nguema out on the right-hand side. Um, it's quite handy to have someone who can play there naturally. So he's going to come in and make his debut today as well. And this is the team for the all-important must-win game against Clermont. We've got Majeki in goal. Um, he actually ended up got, coming straight into the team at the end of the last episode. Luca Diaz got the flu. We brought Majeki in and uh, we've actually promised him more football as well now. So we're keeping him in for a while. So Majeki in goal. A back for a Vita, De, uh, Deleste, Matsima and Van der Mersch. Aquero and Troyori in midfield. Fowry um, has been out for a little while. It looks like he's not a million miles away from recovery. He had a broken toe. We've missed him as well. Um, so Vaquero and Troyori in midfield. Then Lemina and Guayma and Fonseca behind double Steve up front. I'm a little bit disappointed we've kind of been forced by the game into changing the tactic because as recently as the last episode, I think we played really well yesterday. Obviously, we had that disappointing 6-4 defeat where we just didn't seem like we were getting any kind of luck. And it was, I think it was pretty clear then that the the players' heads have gone, the dressing room is gone, and um, perhaps should have worried about things like team bonding and that kind of stuff a little earlier, to try and keep spirits up, to give myself a little bit longer with a tactic that I still think is a better bet for us than this one when it comes to staying in the division. Um, but we've had to change, change we have done. And as you can see... We're getting big chances and they're not going in. Same old story. That was huge for Lemina. And if we were a team in form and a happy squad, that goal, that, that goes in. That's a goal. We've completely played Clermont off the park so far. But I've played enough football manager over the years to know that it doesn't really matter when the dressing room is gone. We all know football manager at its core is morale manager. And at the moment, our morale needs some serious managing. I've taken my eye off the ball with the morale a little bit with the tactic changes and the developing of the young players and basically rubbing my hands with glee, knowing that we had a big amount of money coming in in January from Nguema. I got a little bit complacent knowing I was going to bring in more players. And because of that, I've got myself into a little bit of a pickle. It, I'd almost be willing to accept if we get relegated this year, I have to take a little bit of the responsibility for it. Just a, just a little um, Clermont are on the attack here. 
And please don't concede a goal, lads. This is the first time we've seen them have any kind of attack. And we've not seen anything out of Fonseca yet on the left-hand side. For goodness sake, referee, he has to be offside. Surely he has to be offside. He is stood on the goal line as he's kicked that. What on earth is going on? How are we going to lose another game against a relegation rival? What is happening? Oh, look how far offside that guy must be. No, he's not offside because they've... Oh, God. Oh, it's hideous. We're going attacking. We're demanding more. And this is a disaster if we lose against this lot. We've already lost against Lille, who are around and about us. Um, we're just we're losing to everybody who's in the relegation battle with us. Effectively, we're just losing to everybody. Oh, that's a big goal from Double Steve. It's an immediate reply. Was that Fonseca with the cross or did it come back to Van der Mersch? I think it might have been Van der Mersch, actually. Obviously, it's come from that right-hand side, so Fonseca is involved. There is Fonseca, the new boy. I think he cuts it. Yeah, he cuts it back to Van der Mersch. Cross comes in. It's a lovely header from Double Steve. The first time he's done anything since the last episode when he got a hat-trick. He's, he's another one of these players who just turns up for you lot. We've had so many of them over the years. He is a He's a camera player, the rascal. I'm going to have to start recording every match just to try and get a performance out of Double Steve. And this might be the final time uh, Ulrich and Guaymer is on a football pitch as a permanent tour player because I suspect even if we eventually manage to, I mean, even, even loaning him back, I suspect we're never going to be able to sign him back permanently. If he's off to someone like Manchester United, he's uh, he's not ever going to be of our level again, I don't think. We've also had to take off Van der Maas, who's picked up a knock. So Deleste is having to go out to right back. We are still attacking. This is a must-win game. Look at the table. A draw is not enough. Le Havre are starting to get away from us, and we know we're a better team than they are. Carter's hit the post, and Matt Seema's there to turn in the the rebound and if that if their goal's onside this goal must be onside please give us a little bit of luck the referee is checking the var it has been awarded and that is huge what a huge goal that is if we can learn to defend now for the rest of this match we're dropping back to positive if we can just defend and not concede a goal now we might just be able to start dragging ourselves out of the pickle that we've got ourselves into. Um, right, we are going to bring on our Cola as well to play on that side. Lemon can go in there as the attacking midfielder. Um, and then Double Steve is shattered as well, so Baldi can come on for him. Come on, lads. Just don't balls it up from here. This lot have been rubbish. Look at the match stats. I mean, yes, we're pretty much level for XG. But please let us have something. A league win. The first league win in a long, long time. The tactic change has done its thing. And hopefully, this will start to turn the dressing room around as well. And if we could then get some good news where Anguema decides he's going to Arsenal, we're going to have a load of spensies as well. We could stay in the league yet if the next three or four minutes of my life go to plan. Well, we've now invited Newcastle uh, to make an offer, and they have come in 10.25 million flat, loan back until the end of next season, 25% percentage of next sale. It's perfect. Under normal logic, I'd decline the other two offers. But I feel like I shouldn't decline the Arsenal offer because if we've got all three offers on there, then in my mind, there's a two thirds chance we get to keep Nguema until the end of next season. Although the Newcastle offer is obviously the best one, the Arsenal offer to me is still so much better than the Man United one that it seems counterintuitive to turn down the Arsenal offer. So I'm going to leave the Arsenal one in place. If he goes to either Arsenal or Newcastle, that's perfect. If he goes to Manchester United, then you'll see my sulking face because. We just, oh, it's going to be horrible if he does that. There's two brilliant deals on the table. I, I should be able to talk to the board now. They can't even argue that the Man United deal is a better one now because we're now getting as much money as Man United are offering up front from Newcastle. We should now be able to say to the board, look, board, forget Man United. The Newcastle deal is the best one. But it's, it's not an option. We can't do it. There's no way... There's no way to do that. I just... 
is there a board request? I mean, I doubt there's going to be a board request to a specific player that we can do. I don't think there's anything we can do to get the board not to be stupid in this situation. We just have to hope the player chooses the best offers, one of the two good offers for us. Which he won't, because he's going to go to Manchester United, because he's his football manager. Of course he's going to go to Manchester United, because it's football manager. Oh, my word, it's happening. He's going to Newcastle. As long as he gets a work permit. I mean, he was at the Olympics. He, sure, he will surely get a work permit. If he gets a work permit, he goes to Newcastle, 10.25 million. Why has that gone down to 30%? That was 60% before. No! I mean, still, that's £3 million to spend and some nice financial security, and we keep the player for a year and a half. So I guess it's not a disaster. What is becoming something of a problem is we now have cold and flu going around the camp. Um, we've got Camboala is, sorry, Big Willie's off with a cold. Um, Majeki's now got a virus. Tutu's got a cold. Um, we've got various players just recovering from colds and flus. We could really do without that. Please and thank you. Two to three weeks with a virus. He got into the team because Diaz got the flu. Now he's going to be back out again because he's got a virus. Rubbish. I can't believe we're going to... We're going to get the good deal for Nguema. That's fantastic. Well, not ideal circumstances going into the Ren game. We've got Van der Berg suspended. All the African players are off at the African Nations Cup. So that's Gomez, Barcola, uh, Big Willy. Um, and there's a couple of players from the B team as well who've gone off. Russ Eddy, one of the name of the game players, is there too. Uh, we've also got Vita uh, with the cold or virus. Majeki's got it as well. Lemina has now got the virus as well. We've also made an offer to sign in permanently from Paris Saint-Germain. So have Brest. And we're very sad if after all the time and investment we've put into Noah Lemina, who's been coming to us on loan for four years now, um, if he goes to Brest after all this, I'll be fuming. Um, and Fowry's still coming back from his injury as well. So it's a very uh, bare bones team that we're putting out there today. Diaz obviously coming back in in goal is the main headline and a rare start for Gabriel Tutu. But nothing can bring me down with the Unguayman news, even though we're only going to get 30% of the fee to reinvest. 30% of... I'd kind of resign myself to getting 60% of... The two million Man United were giving us up front. So 30% of 10 million is still more than that. We get to keep the player for a year and a half. And because it's Newcastle, if he is as good as I hope he's going to become, he's much more likely to have a future transfer away from Newcastle than he will Manchester United or Arsenal. Because again, it's football manager and Newcastle, as although they've got all the money under the sun, never actually win anything. So you know, two or three years down the line, he might move on for 50 or 60 million, in which case we get another bunch of cash. And if he doesn't, then we'd probably be able to bring him back here. It's like a low, it's a no lose transfer. It's perfect. What we need to do now is make sure that it sets us up for a while so we don't have to sell Fowry anytime soon. Job number one is going to be make Vequero permanent, um, which is going to use a big bunch of that budget um, and then hopefully get Lemon a permanent as well, tie Fowry down for a longer term deal, and then see what we can do with the remaining million or so we'll have left after all those deals. Fingers crossed we can bring in a couple of extra players who might just give us enough to keep us in the league this season. That's the plan. Watch him not get a work permit now. Oh, I'll be fuming. Although it does mean we get to keep our best player for longer, so... I guess it's not the end of the world. It just means we're very likely to get relegated uh, this season. Oh, Diaz is just not good enough. Is he? Remember when I was picking him because he was better than the other guy? Oh, uh, how good are Ren? I haven't even looked. I was, I've been so caught up in transfers because it's January. They're mid table. We've got to finish above Le Havre. The amount, and we know we're a better team than they are. We have got to, we've got a laser focus in on that 16th place and hope that we break the playoff curse. It looks like they're losing as well, which I guess is some consolation. We're going to go attacking. We're going to offer some encouragement to our players. Uh, but like I say, we're down to bare bones. Having 2-2 two -two on the pitch is not particularly inspiring for me. 
um, in light of the fact he's not even looked like scoring a goal this season. He's so close to being our all-time record goal scorer. He's probably desperate for us to get relegated so he can actually get there, get his name in the record books, erase Big Fat Dennis. It's the only way he's going to do it. He's never going to score for us in the league. Um, oh, oh, a save from Diaz. Right, come on now. Get the ball forward. Why are they still attacking? Get the ball forward. Let's have a, let's let Anguema show the work permit, people. That he's worth a work permit. Are the Department for Work and Pensions watching? Fingers crossed they are. Um, Ulrich and Guayma, he's very good. Please give him a work permit. We need the money. Please and thank you. Because if he doesn't go now, I know what's going to happen. He'll go to Paris Saint-Germain in a few weeks for three million. Because there's no way for him to go to England and get England money anymore. We don't have a backup left back. Because he, he's injured. He's got the stupid flu. Can we just... Stop having our players drop like flies. I'm looking at the bench. There's nothing to come on. Baldi is the. I mean, who's I don't another one who I don't think has ever scored for us. Or Renault and Lopi in midfield. Once the midfield gets tired, there's not. A, there is no game changer on that bench. I would love to have Lemina or Barcola or anybody available. It doesn't matter anyway because we're now two goals down at home once again. Can I change back to the four three three? Yeah, I just think like we're gonna have much more chance of staying in this league if we play that system where at least we looked good. We were still losing games. At least we looked good playing that way. Look how poor Tutu is. Um, and we get to see, I think, a debut for Yanis Begdadi, who came in in, uh, in the summer. Didn't plan to let him anywhere near the team ever. But this is how desperate our situation is coming. R repeat everything I've just said for Tarek Arconte, who's just come on on the other side. This is, I mean, I don't feel like there's a goal coming. Baldi may as well come on up front as well. And then uh, we'll bring Lopi on in midfield. I mean, what's what's the point? We're 2-0 down now. We're not going to get back into this one. We may as well drop back to positive and try not to concede again. And uh, hope that we're able to get some transfer moves done with this Unguema money before the end of January. Because that's the, that's the one frustration. The Unguema thing has dragged on for the first two weeks of the window now meaning we are only going to have two weeks to get our business done. And I don't really know what I'm going to go out and get. I'd love I'd love a load of players good enough for the league. That's that's the goal. Very broad target. Um, but when I'm limiting myself to French players, it does, does make, thing, make things tricky. We've had the Portuguese league loaded for the entire save. There's so much talent in Portugal. Portuguese players are always right at the top of my scout reports. Um, and very rarely have they got a French passport like Fonseca did. So I need to stop scouting Portugal. It's just making me feel sad. Clermont have just scored in their game, which is also making me feel sad because I think we might be bottom of the league now, which with all of the Unguema good news, being bottom of the league leaves us with an awful lot to do. Oh, my word. Well... I guess you'll find out tomorrow if Unguema got a work permit. Or not. I mean, spoilers, he's almost certainly going to get one. I don't expect that to go wrong. Um, but we, oh my word, the table looks miserable. Hopefully, I'm showing you lots of new players tomorrow. If we try and get Stephen Boyd back. <sighs> Much to do. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.